welcome to the Boston Roll channel. If you want to support my daily Eternal Magic offerings while getting amazing perks like the Boston Roll Discord community, have me play your deck on the channel, or list inside more guides before tournaments, check out the Patreon or YouTube membership program. This channel is possible because of these amazing sponsors. Check them out, all their links are in the video description. As always, thanks for being here. Let's go play some Magic. Welcome back to the Boston Roll channel for another Legacy video. Today, at the request of Patreon subscriber Swaggery, I am playing Aminatu the Fate Shifter Yorion Miracles. Aminatu has kind of captured the interests of Legacy players since her printing in a Commander product several years ago. That interest fell off pretty quick when people realized that she's not what we were looking for. However, she's still an aspirational thing to build around. 3 mana Planeswalker comes in on relatively high loyalty, comes in on 3 pluses to 4 immediately, doesn't get bolted. Those are Ren and 6 stats. The plus is draw a card, put a card from your hand on top of your library. This is not card advantage, it is card selection. However, it is pretty good card selection, and if we're doing stuff like Terminus and Temporal Mastery, then we could set up some powerful stuff with this. The minus one is exile target permanent you own, then return it to the battlefield under your control. So we're incentivized to put a little bit of flickering in the deck. Some flicker payoffs. We've got Solitude, Seasoned Engineer, resetting the one ring so it doesn't hurt you anymore. You could reset your Planeswalkers, get an extra ping off Bowmaster, do another Sam thing. There's quite a few things worth flickering in the deck. And then the ultimate, which is mostly flavor text, but I did play Aminatu on the channel once or twice before. And I think it almost came up once, or I had a chance to do it once that I missed because I wasn't thinking about it. Choose left or right. Each player gains control of all non-land permanents other than Aminatu, controlled by the next player in that chosen direction. Basically, in a 1v1 game, you get all your opponent's permanents and vice versa, but you still have Aminatu. And her minus one is exile target permanent you own, if you miss that detail, so you can start stealing your permanents back. One at a time, one activation at a time. I don't know, that's in there. The list that Swaggery sent me had two Court of Grace in the Seasoned Engineer slot. I think the initiative is better than the Monarch, and that gives us a way to actually win the game. And it's a very exciting thing to flicker with Aminatu, where flickering Court of Grace is only good if we've lost the Monarch somehow. But Seasoned Engineer just gets paid immediately on arrival when you do that. The rest of the deck is just some white removal spell, some blue counters and draws, and... Literally one black card, Orcish Bowmaster, on top of the Aminatu. Pretty straightforward stuff. We're just trying to make Aminatu work. Let's get into it. This is Yorion Aminatu Esper Miracles. 3 for 1 Trading is one of Europe's leading Magic the Gathering retailers. Their online shop has a fantastic selection of high end Magic cards, especially for vintage, legacy, and old school players. They now exclusively offer the Bosch and Roll community free, fully insured, and fast worldwide shipping on all their high-end singles, full sets, and out-of-print sealed product. They upload new cards every Wednesday with weekly sale offers and reductions. Use my code BNR0723 to get free worldwide shipping on your first order over 341 euros, approximately $380. Scan the QR code or go to shop3 trading.com I'm on the play with an Island Ponder Keep situation. This is one of the worst Island Ponder Keeps that I would consider. But you have to stand for something in this world. I'm going to keep. This pile of four drops plus the Terminus that we can't currently set up is concerning. Bowmaster goes off on the first fetch land we draw. Swords of Plowshares is interactive. Like, um, it's fine. We do just need this Ponder to convert on some lands, though. Bone to 5, that makes me nervous. A hand needs some time to set up, and if they are some busted deck that just chased a nut five, I'm in trouble. Plus, we just found this Force of Will, but no blue card to go with it. Now I have this really miserable choice to make of resolve this ponder, put Brainstorm in my hand now, and then take Force of Will next turn, and hope Force Blue card is good enough next turn, or just shuffle and hope to hit the land. I'm going to shuffle. Yeah, it did hit the land. Let's see if it's good enough. We might just die a turn one here. A forest. That's good news. Oh no, the Delighted Halfling. That's bad news. And I can still kill it, but I was hoping for a Noble Hierarch that I could pick off with the Bowmaster. Alright, alright. This is suddenly not looking so bad, actually. 
Still need to hit my next two land drops. But the type of interaction I have does appear to be relevant, at least a little bit here. They got a Misty Rainforest. A Bayou. Please play a Fiend Artisan that I can just kill for free. Oh yeah. Good news, everybody. Right, let's keep hitting these land drops. Just like that, we are in the game. I'm going to Bowmaster this thing. And this Wasteland is extremely tempting, but I think it's better for me to get to 4 mana than it is to worry about their mana. And if I was going to do that, I should have left up Tundra. It doesn't affect my hand, but it affects what I'm representing. Another Fiend Artisan. I've got a Solitude for that. Elvish Reclaimer, gross. Okay. Well, deck, can we keep running hot? Can I get land number four? Oh, no. Had a four drop instead. Disappointing. Okay, I'm going to just put Yorian in my hand. And I could pitch the Terminus or hope to set it up later, which is really good in this matchup. Or I could pitch the Yorian, who might just suck. I'm going to pitch Yorian and delete the Fiend Artisan. These are both tutor engines, but I'm more worried about the creatures their deck can produce than Gaia's Cradle, which I'm ready to wasteland if it shows up. Big Noble Hierarch. One card left over there. Come on, deck. Hook it up. We did it. We're in there. Right on time, every time. I'm going to get Scrubland just to round out all my colors. And if they spin into Dryad Arbor, that could be a third creature. If they play a Bowmaster of their own, that could be creature three and four. I still think Seasoned Dungeoneer is better than One Ring. This also gets my next land drop. We're working our way up to Terminus. Or One Ring plus Spell, or Wasteland you plus do more. I'm going to prioritize the planes here. Cleric, Rogue, Warrior, or Wizard. Orc, Archer, Orc, Army. Okay. These things can't get the buff, so I'm not going to attack. And they are spinning in their end step. That is Cradle. They could Natural Order for Atraxa here, which is pretty powerful. I would have to one ring, string one ring into Terminus over the next couple turns to, to outmuscle that. And at least I have a plan. Hoof doesn't do enough here. Not without some big help from their other card in their hand. Once upon a time, certainly not what they were looking for here. Not the card I was worried about. They found Boseju. I don't think that does anything. It casts Natural Order, but it doesn't actually... Like, a Boseju doesn't matter. Alright, there it is. Moment of truth. Atraxa. I'm surprised. They found a Bowmaster. They only hit Landing Creature here. So they're going to get two cards off this Atraxa. And they took the two cards that represent the most creatures in Bowmaster and Lair of the Hydra. I think I want to just get them dead. I'm going to forge onto Seasoned Dungeoneer and just bring the Ruckus. Because they have multiple One Rings I can hide behind. I can also Wasteland their Black Source so this Bowmaster isn't necessarily a thing. One Ring. I have protection from everything. I'm going to attack first with Seasoned Dungeoneer. Who attacks for at least five, maybe six. Okay, we got another land. I'm going to draw now before they can hang out Bowmaster. Oh, wow, that's messed up. All right. Wasteland your Bayou. Okay. I can pitch Solitude, exiling Terminus. At any point, I can hardcast Solitude next turn. There's that lair. Not currently representing mana for Bowmaster. They could spend... Their, next, their mana this turn, spinning up a black source, and then play the Bowmaster on the following turn. Hopefully all that comes too little too late for them. I take one from the ring. I trap them in the, the Undercity. And this is why I switched the Court of Grace into Season Dungeoneer in deck build. Court of Grace would have been kind of more of the same on this board, where Season Dungeoneer is going to town. I'm going to draw some cards when I know they can't punish it. Eminatu, what's up? Deck with Seasoned Dungeoneer. For some negation on top of my deck. I would like to put that into my graveyard. I don't think that card's going to help me this game. My opponent is dead next turn, and I have another ring. They would have to gain life or draw a removal spell for Seasoned Dungeoneer to win here. Re-ring. I can even keep the old one and keep my draw engine online. And still enjoy the protection of the first one. Yeah, okay, cool. We, we managed to beat a... Uh, Cradle Control player who mauled a five against my handful of white removal. Good job, me. 
Rest in Peace is not textless. It does affect the size of Reclaimer and Fiend Artisan, though it's at the cost of turning off Sam. I think that's the only thing that cares about my graveyard. I don't have any Mystic Sanctuaries or anything. My white removal's all in the main. Powder Keg's a sweeper that's in the sideboard. I'll bring that in. The Temporal Mastery would definitely flip this matchup on any turn where I cast it with any sort of board presence, but I think being alive is priority number one. Plague Engineer is really awkward against them. It doesn't necessarily kill anything important anymore. Elves has come a long way away from being worried about Plague Engineer. I can probably, like, Necrotal some creature, like play Plague Engineer, name Dryad, kill a Dryad Arbor, and they just play different creatures or remove this and they don't care anymore. But it might be good enough just as a two-for-one. If I have cuts for it. Like I said, the main deck's basically already where I want it for this matchup. Oh, they are an Orcish Bowmaster deck too. Alright, I just talked myself into it. Plague Engineer on Orc is good enough. Now, I hate to do it, but I actually think Aminatu is the worst card in this matchup. Oh no. And they're not attacking my mana. I could go down a basic island. That's 28 lands out of 80 cards. I think that's still responsible enough. Just one more spell in a matchup that's not about resource denial. The Force Negations are in a weird spot because maybe I want all three in. Maybe I want the one that's already in out. Yeah, the sideboard just isn't mapped very well for Cradle Control, which, I mean, it's fine. This is a, a goofball brew that we're playing for the channel. But a competitive deck, you need to map your sideboard. And by that, I mean really think about the metagame in terms of Against this matchup, I need to take out these cards, which means I need to put in these cards. And you can't just have five cards you want to bring in and one card you want to take out. The opponent's got a Zenith to start the game off. I've kept this Island Ponder one lander again. If I find a white land, I'll be feeling okay. Force of Will helps a little bit. All right, Ponder, just show me three lands. That would be the nuts. A okay, one land, and it's not white. I think I'll take what I can get on this one land. That ring is very powerful for later. Thoughtseize, bummer. I'd probably take Brainstorm from this hand, though I could see the argument for Force of Will or Prismatic Ending, depending on how they're mapping out their, the rest of their game. Force of Will, okay. They're going to start throwing fastballs. This is so disappointing that I don't have a white source. Just killing this Fiend Artisan on curve would be the nuts. But that is not available to me. Now I have an important decision to make. I can brainstorm right now before they have Orcish Bowmaster showing, but I know I'm drawing a blank. Or I could wait, try to get a full three fresh cards brainstorm next turn, but then they could get me with Bowmaster. I'm going to chill and try to let... I'm going to try to give my deck as much opportunity to function as possible. Elvish Reclaimer. Okay, they tap their Black Source to do that. That's a small piece of good news on the, the Orcish Bowmaster front. They could Fiend Artisan Dried Arbor into Bowmaster and just put it into play. If they Fiend for two, I might just have to Brainstorm in response. Oh, go no. Well, shit. All right. Well, I'm just going to lose to that. I understand why they took my, my Force of Will now. Okay, Chokes in. This probably means for game three, I bring in all my Force of Negations and just... I don't think I want them necessarily versus the main plan, but this sideboard strategy is a tough one. Uh, this is not going to beat them. Okay. Game three. Uh, choke. My arch nemesis at all times against all opponents. Teferi is reasonable on curve. Maybe Sam is not important here. And he does pick up fetch lands. I do have two scrub lands, four wastelands, and a plains in the deck to play on through a choke. It's not really a plan, but it's not nothing. Yeah, I think two Sams are leaving, two Force Indications coming in. I don't want to do this, but they've put me in this position. <laughs> I got the four of a kind with no lad. Uh, this is not going to work, but I am excited about it. Four of a kind out of an 80 card deck. Someone, Frank Karsten, do the math. I am keeping this and I'm going to bottom the planes. I can fetch it if I need it. There's no basic swamp in the deck. I thought about that during deck build, but figured I wouldn't need it. And you don't need it versus 
moon effects because all your removal is white. But it does matter a lot against choke effects, which are less popular than moon effects. You can't cover everything with a single deck idea. Got to kind of pick your strengths and weaknesses. I'm not going to fetch. Just going to draw cards here. Yo! Okay. That was one of the better draws I could ask for ever. Underground C plus basic planes is the mana here. That basic planes might betray me later, but right now at least let's respect Choke enough to play a little bit of a game through it. And then if they bowmaster my bowmaster, Plague Engineer on Orc sweeps up what they've done. Elvish Reclaimer. And Dotha Triumph. Fascinating. Okay, I'm going to attack with my creatures. Try to make this block look too good not to take, but anyone who's played Magic before would not fall for that. I'm going to fetch a Scrubland and put Yorion in hand here. This insulates as much as I can against Choke while giving me interaction in the form of Solitude. Unfortunately, if they just go land Choke here, I am in trouble for a little while. Gataktigh. Okay. Solitude removes that. Cradle. Okay, we got an Elf Warrior and a Kithkin Advisor. Plague Engineer can't beat both of these. It can still beat one of them, though. I'm going to attack with both of my creatures and see if they're interested in blocking now. I mean, they obviously suspect a trick, as they should. I can Brainstorm and then still play Plague Engineer if I need to. Yeah, I think I start with a Brainstorm here. Lots of mana. I'm going to put back Scrubland Tundra. And then fetch for Scrubland and play Plague Engineer. I think I name Orc with this, just proactively. And I can Solitude under a Gaddock Teague. Yeah, they just went for a fetch land there. I, I was, if they had gotten Dryad Arbor, it would have incentivized me to maybe Solitude something in the end step. But just going for a fetch land, they're trying to stabilize the combat situation. Oh wow, they went for a main phase, or not main phase, upkeep, but. They could have just gotten Dryad Arbor directly with that, and they went around the block to get the fetch land first. They might just be queuing up a natural order here. They know I can't force of will it. All right, now I can just hard cast this solitude. We've gotten where I'm trying to go in life. I think this Plague Engineer is supposed to attack. It has Death Touch. Trades with anything. Yeah, even Endurance, I'm like not even that worried about. Let's trade. Yeah, they didn't even want to trade it. They're, they're, all of their material on board is worth more than this 2-2 Death Touch. Fetching in the end step. I just have to decide where and how this Solitude is going to be useful to me. I would like Gaddock to, to leave the battlefield. And they're spinning up. Is it the second Dryad Arbor? Lair of the Hydra. Okay. I'm still going to chill for now. I would love it if this Solitude became a relevant combat object that then Yorion can flicker next turn. But I expect, oh, we have Cradle into Cradle. This is just a hoof from hand. They can't Zenith with Teague in plays. Firing up Lair of the Hydra. Interesting. Just 7-7 seven, seven creature. Okay. They're just getting their baits in. Wow, Dryad Arbor's in the fight too. No, you can't send with that. Okay, maybe they can't send with that. What do I know? Okay, um, one mana up. They've already made their land drop. I don't know what this could be. If I just block Lair of the Hydra, I take six. And then I can Solitude Gaddock Teague. Or I could Solitude the Lair. They're down a land. Block Dryad Arbor, gain life, chump block. Okay. I don't care about the Teague if Yorion is my plan. I care about the Teague if One Ring is my plan. And I'm currently in Yorion zone. Exile Lair. They're down a land. Block Dryad Arbor. They're down another land. They didn't have Legolas's quick, quick Reflexes, which is a card I was mildly concerned about in that spot. It will collect some money on that block. They're down two lands on that exchange and two creatures, which represent two mana off Gaia's Cradle. Yeah, the Teague is pretty annoying right now. Not attacking with Solitude. I don't want them to get a trade in combat when I'm about to Yorion flicker this thing. If they don't block with Teague, it's dead anyway. Okay, they see the line. Because I could name Advisor and ping it with Bowmaster. But now I could Solitude the Reclaimer, so that was a lose-lose for them. I'm leaving up white. I'm tapping all my non-islands and then leaving up white, which is the best color I can have if they do choke me. Exile, Bowmaster, and Solitude. 
their kingdom has collapsed all of a sudden. I'm not counting the game as one yet because Cradle Control is very sneaky. But that was a very good turn cycle for me. At last turn, they activated a Lair of the Hydra for X equals 7. And this turn, they have two mana and one creature. Jukabog, okay. They've attacked my graveyard twice now. A resource that I barely use in my deck. They can play Bowmaster with the mana they have. I have to annoyingly respect that. I'm just going to start by attacking with Yorion. Am I supposed to ending this Endurance? Or am I supposed to save it for a better permanent, like Choke? I could have attacked for a whole lot more if I played the ending. Whatever. Here's the One Ring. Okay, cool. Uh... By holding the prismatic ending, got them on the hook for this one ring, or with for this orcish bowmaster that I can kill now. I'm not sure why they didn't kill my bowmaster. Is dealing one to me better than me not having a creature? I, I don't actually know. I, I have not played a lot of Cradle Control, but that seems like just money on the table right there. The fairy. I mean, if they choke me right now, it's still really bad, but I do have a board presence. They can cast Natural Order. They cannot Thoughtseize. This turn. Zenith for two. There was a Zenith locked under their Teague. Collector Oof. Okay. I can bounce that with Teferi. Or I can bounce Solitude with or Yorion with Teferi. Oh, goodness. All right, I have real thought, real decisions to make here. I lose one. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. If I draw a land here, we're cooking. Oh, Prismatic ending. Maybe it was easier than it needed to be. The ending the oof. Eight black. Get rid of that, please. Draw two cards. That's a basic if I need it. I'm going to play Teferi and just float him, like plus him, and hang out. I was bouncing Yori on next turn and then going large with it. Just flickering all of my permanents is insane. Leave some blockers back to defend Teferi. There's the choke. I've done my best to play around that, including Teferi can just bounce it if I think that's better than eating their board. We have one card in hand. Oh, that can't be Bowmaster because I have Teferi. Teferi's so good. Samwise, another one ring brainstorm. Yeah, I'm going to attack for four, bounce Yorion, play Yorion, reset everything, and try to win on the following turn. Yorion, get in there. Oh, it's at eight. Teferi, bounce Yorion, and then one, two, three. Just have to figure out what makes the most sense. I think I should fetch. I get Basic Island out of the way. I'm just looking for my worst lands here. This Marsh Flats can be a white source if I need one. And then one, two, three, four, five, lead up white. Yorion. Like our Solitude, Bowmaster, Ring, Teferi. Teferi is briefly out of play if they have a Bowmaster to play. Otherwise, I'm going to Flame Tongue Cavu their whole board here. And I can draw new cards with the Ring because it's untapped. And we got the Scoop. That was a satisfying little control game. Let's kill their stuff, counteract their important spells, grind, 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 and eventually they're out of juice. Choke's a lot worse on turn 8 than it is on turn 2, that's for sure. On to the next round. This video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, the easiest way to build magic decks online. Moxfield supports over 30 formats, including Legacy and everything else you'll see on this channel. There's multiple customizations so you can interact with your deck how you want. Views such as text, grid, or stacks. And groupings like type, subtype, color, color identity, even artist. The site offers light mode, dark mode, and so much more. However you want to see your deck, Moxfield can provide it for you. Follow my Moxfield to keep up with the channel and what I'm playing in paper. I'll see you there. On the play in round number two with an excellent island ponder keep situation. If they're a waste if ponder misses and they're a wasteland deck, this could fail, but that's a lot to ask. Alright, cool. Force of Will in my hand now, basic island on top of the deck, source of plowshares under it. Ready for anything. Basaju. Oh, okay. We're playing against uh, 12 Post. They're going to name Wasteland with this. A card that I do play, strangely enough. I'm going to Ponder. I actually don't necessarily want that Source of Plushers on top of the deck, which is lucky because this is a full shuffle anyway. Shuffle. 
another force. Okay. Vespian stage and oh goodness. Return this to its owner's hand, reveal the top four cards of your library, put a land card from them among, onto the battlefield tap for the rest into your graveyard. Then this has channel, return X target non-legendary cards from your graveyard to your hand. I love this card. I play this in EDH, in my Tatsunari Toad Rider Enchantress deck. I'm going to try to answer this with a removal spell rather than a force of will. Come on, white source. Don't let me down, brainstorm. Always had it. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, I did also draw Wasteland, and I would like to remove that pinning needle so I can start wasting them. However, I don't think I can let this Shigeki stay in play. I'm going to fetch Tundra, play the Prismatic Ending, and I can Aminatu next turn, and then start trying to figure out where this game's going and find some other way to remove the Pithing Needle, or just some way to kill them, in spite of it. It is turn two, and they haven't put a Cloud Post into play yet, so the, the pressure to remove this Pithing Needle isn't that high. Suddenly. All right, suddenly they have two of them. Okay. Prismatic Ending, Teferi... Brainstorm gets me more looks here than Aminatu does. Brainstorm first. Prismatic ending, what's up? Okay, put back Swords to Plowshares and Underground Sea. Or, I guess it doesn't matter. Um, Underground Sea, Swords to Plowshares. Because I'm playing Wasteland this turn anyway. Okay, get rid of that. Wasteland the Cloud Post before Thespian Stage can copy it. The expedition map, they're still moving forward in directions they want to move. But we answered the first one. Echoing Deeps, oh no, that could copy a land in the graveyard. Oh man, they got everything covered these days. Okay, my top card is Underground Sea. I'm fairly confident I want don't want to draw that card. I'm going to fetch four. I think a Tundra, or I could get Scrubland here. What's important to me in this matchup? Wasteland's important. Which means Sam is kind of important if I can get both at the same time. Winning the game is important, Seasoned Dungeoneer. I don't think there's a one drop I would cast this turn. Oh, Ponder Preordain. There's three hits. I think I just get the Rafine's Tower and then play Eminatu. This might be a game where I just tra trade permanence with them a few turns from now. Yeah, that's a minus six. That doesn't take that long. Plus. All right, draw the planes, put the planes back. That's what I'm talking about. This is not card advantage. It's just card selection. And sometimes it's just look at the top card of your deck. You search for Yavimaya. Okay. It's a little bit terrifying that they're more interested in green mana than more cloud posts. That means they must already have many cloud posts available. Like this last speed stage and this Vesuva in their hand. Oof. All right, Eminatu. I need you to do something pretty quick here. Plus, Underground C. I'll put back... Planes, play Underground Sea. I think holding up Force of Will on the hard cast is better than putting Yorin in my hand, who then I would have to pitch if I want to Force of Will. 3, 6, 9, 10, 11. They have at least 11 men. If they start throwing Ulamogs at me, this game is going to end pretty fast. Oh, another Cloud Post. All right, so they actually have way more mana than I just predicted. Ugin the Spirit Dragon. Oh, I can counter that one. And tapping into a casual 18 mana next turn. Another Force of Will. Okay. Uh, well, I don't need two of that one. I can answer a creature and a spell this turn. But not if that spell is Emrakul. And I can steal their permanence next turn. If I think that's worth doing. This crop rotation might get Eye of Ugin. I think I have to counter this. If they just raw dog an Eldrazi from their hand, then... They might have just got me, but they're pretty resilient to counter spells anyway. I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully I just cut off their action, because I know I can't cut off their resources. They played the Yavimaya, which is a little bit scary. Because if you can't either neutralize Eminatu or kill me this turn, it's probably better just to not play anything. So moves are being made here. Primeval Titan, Dark Depths, and Eye of Ugin. Okay, what's the plan here? Because I'm about to take all those nice things. Okay. One, two, three. Put Yori into my hand to go with this Force of Will. One, two, three. Ultimate Aminatu. I would like your cards, please. 
all these nice lands you just stewarded for that primeval titan. Oh, it's non lands. Fuck. I don't know how my card works. Whoops. <laughs> uh, yep, it does say non lane right on the card. I've been talking a lot of trash. All right, yeah, we're super fucking dead here. Yeah. Okay. Opponent jammed into Aminatu appropriately because <laughs> they read my card and I didn't. Why would it stop at lands? Designers are cowards these days. Glimmer Post gains a bunch of life. Uh, they can easily tutor and cast Emrakul from this board. Yep. Okay, okay, fine, fine, fine. Eminatu is a coward. It seems weird, but do I need a Surgical Extraction this deck? And I don't want to. Powder Keg does clear out Elvish Reclaimers, Pithing Needles, and the like. Terminus probably too far behind to be useful. I'm really glad my opponent played that Primeval Titan last game because I would have em minus Eminatu straight into the dirt and gotten nothing if they didn't have a non-land permanent. Ugh. All right, shake that off. Now we know what all our cards do. We're unstoppable. Force of Negation is not, like, good, but it there could be spots where it's appropriate to aggressively force an Expedition map. They're also a Green Sun Zenith deck. They don't draw a lot of cards. Orcish Bowmaster might be a stinker. And Surgical is so sus because it only matters if I Wasteland a Cloud Post and I can extract it before they copy it somehow. Because if there's just one in play, Surgicaling the rest doesn't matter at all. Like we saw that game, they had so many Cloud Posts in play and I Wastelanded the first one and then they copied it from the graveyard, then copied the copy twice all in one turn. Like it barely even matters where their Cloud Posts are with the, the new copy a card in your graveyard land. It's very cool. Okay, I will put one Surgical in my deck, though I'm sure it is horseshit. I'll keep this hand with Wasteland and Sam in it. That does mean I can't Wasteland effectively until turn 3. And I might have to force pitching Eminatu on a pinning needle. Ugh. This matchup's bad, by the way. If that wasn't clear by how hard we just got kicked, despite doing mostly everything we wanted to do in a game. They've got a Forest. Elvish Reclaimer, nice. That one actually lines up great with my interaction in my hand. Get Tundra, plow that. And the game's far from over, but you feel like a god when you get even a reasonable exchange against Cloud Post as a control deck. Glimmer Post, okay. And Shigeki. Okay, I have a second plow. This is this continues to line up pretty well. This is a little bit unfortunate that I can't just shove Aminatu onto this board. And I probably Wasteland, then just Sam it back up and start attacking. Maybe I'm just supposed to float Wasteland and play. But then they can crop rotate and stuff and if plan around it. Well, oh, I can Prismatic ending this one. I was about to say, this might be the spot where I Force of Will this, but it's not. I am going to Prismatic end it, though. Play my Wasteland. I'm going to Maze of Ith check them. Make sure they know how to tap their card. All right, they figured it out. I'm not going to do that every turn. It's just a waste of time at some point. And having a potent four drop in my hand. Oh, yuck. All right, well, if my plan is to deny them mana, this is a must counter. Now, I would very much like for my deck to provide me with... Uh, I've been hoodwinked. Yep, opponent just dancing circles around me over there. Great job, opponent. They could even... You know, they're one short of casting their own one ring. Aminatu, why? Why? I hate you. I don't hate you, Aminatu. I actually like you a lot, but you're currently not castable, even with the help from my opponent's green men over there. And I do think Yorian in hand is better than wastelanding this Yavamaya. I got five mana to work with. Zenith for three. This ramming up Excavator. What do we got here? Yep. Glimmer Post. Now Wasteland is hot garbage. And another Shigeki. We're so dead. Okay, uh, I cannot win this game. We don't need to play it out. Uh, they have perfectly countered my game plan at every turn. The double wasteland start into the, the double carpet. The ram and app just gets back the wasteland. Uh, this, this did not work out, and this matchup is just utterly heinous for any control deck. And if you're an 80-card control deck built around a potentially suspicious Planeswalker that's hard to cast, it's even worse. On to the next round. You come here to level up at Magic. 
to level up as a software engineer, check out the YouTube series Dev Better, hosted by the founder of Seven Factor Software and Magic Player, Jeremy Duvall. You can also find Jeremy co-hosting episodes 106 and 109 of the Tech Talk series with Keith Shaw on the Tech Talk YouTube channel. Head over to Tech Talk and don't forget to subscribe to Seven Factors YouTube channel for every episode of Dev Better. On the play in round three, I'm going to keep this hand, got lands and spells in it. I'm going to preordain, looking for some action. Sometimes you want to save your cantrips because you're not sure what the matchup's about and you're not sure what you need yet, but I have lands, I'm looking for stuff to cast, like this season, Dungeon here. Okay. Bottom of land, top season, Dungeon here. It's in my hand now. Planes. Mother. Okay. Well, I have to end this mother. We find another matchup where Basic Swamp would actually be pretty cool to have access to. But we're chilling. I have plenty of lands. If they start wasting and porting, I've got my next three land drops lined up here. Balia, she's annoying because she particularly lines up well against the Teferi that I was hoping to bounce whatever they played with this turn. Eminatu, no! You poor sweet angel. We hardly knew you. I'm going to put your in my hand. That was a great Thalia. A third basic. I mean, they could see the Wasteland. They might even have a Caracas or something in hand and recognize that they don't want to play it. Stoneforge Mystic. Not a card you want to answer by bouncing, generally speaking, because it has an ETB effect. I probably have to let them have Cauldra and then bounce the Germ. Oh, now I can just kill the Stoneforge Mystic. That's probably the best way to do this. Okay, Prismatic Ending. Bang, bang. Can cheat under the Thalia attacks, because Thalia... Prismatic Ending doesn't care where the mana came from, just that you spent it. And I announce Prismatic Ending for zero, pay one different color for Thalia's plus one, and we just get it on curve. I am going to cycle Lorien Revealed this turn. I think continuing to hit land drops is going to be important in my life. Flicker Wisp, okay. That's a pretty mediocre Flicker Wisp. So they can hold up Swords to Plowshares now. Cycle Lorien. I'm going to get non-basics because the initiative is part of my deck and there's only one basic left. Get a Tundra or an Underground Sea. I have basic white. I don't have basic black. I'll get Underground Sea. Flip Terminus for the win. Another Aminatu, which is really not very good here. And I can play Teferi, bounce this Flicker Wisp, lose Teferi, and just get a card deeper into my deck. I could also Aminatu plus absorb four damage and then... Shuffle away the bad Aminatu. Teferi goes a card deeper. While, I mean, you don't really want to reset a Flicker Wisp. That was a pretty modest use of that card that my opponent just had to do just to have it. All right, I will play the world's most expensive, whatever this is, uh, Preordain. Uh, do I want another Aminatu or do I want the land? It's not even a Preordain. What card is draw one, put one back? Is that, has that even be pr been printed? Probably not, because the effect is horrendous. Okay, I think I put back Aminatu here, because she is just not good in the matchup, or at least not in the board spot. If there was just a Terminus in my hand, I'd be pretty excited about her, but there's not. Four mana, select one card, gain five life. Would I, would I play that? Probably not. Okay, Aminatu immediately dead. And I am going to fetch, I don't want that card. It's on top. The other Aminatu. The Scrubland to round out my colors here. Do I want to Wasteland Iganjo? Do I think they're hanging this out there for any reason other than just that's the land drop they had to make? Are they protecting a better land? I'm going to start with Teferi, actually. I know they have a powerful 7 drop in their hand. That actually costs 8 right now. All right, I am not going to... Or I have a fetch land that can get anything. Okay. I'm going to play Teferi. And I'm going to bounce Flicker Wisp. If I draw a white removal spell, I can point it at Thalia. And if I don't, I can wasteland them. Oh no, they have some sort of instant. I'm just ramming Solitude into play. Sure. Okay, that's really good. I guess I'm bouncing that one. I'll bounce the five drop rather than the three drop that also has the effect of the five drop. Eminatu, where are you? Do I wasteland them and take them off the Solitude? I think I do. I'm just. Treading water here, trying to not die long enough to, to find a Terminus on top of my deck. There's only two in the 80 cards. It's not like I'm drawing super live to these. Reflicker. 
they can flicker their flicker, which comes back in the end, their end step, which can exile their flicker wisp. Yeah, they're doing the trick. Now, even if I do flip Terminus, they'll have a creature on their turn again. Because these flicker wisps will start dancing in and out in the end steps if they want to commit fully to this, this line. Oh no, okay, they're taking one of my lands from my turn. Alright, they're not playing around Wraths, so they're just trying to mana screw me a little. Sure. Terminus. Swords to Postures. Not going to complain about that one. Okay, I have a land I can play. Seasoned Dungeoneer is almost certainly a mistake to introduce into this game state. I can't Swords to Plowshares if I play Yorion. 3, 6, 7, 8, fetch, fetch. All right, I mean, I'm at 1 if I play Yorion here. And they have a removal spell. Like, I know they have Solitude, but they did miss a land drop last turn. Maybe they're sandbagging a Caracas to just get a little combat sweep on me. It is nice, at least, that Caracas is in my deck somewhere. Or, uh, Terminus is in my deck somewhere. We don't talk about Caracas. It's nice that Terminus is in my deck somewhere. I do have live outs to actually flip this game entirely, even though I'm way behind here. There's the plow that they telegraphed a thousand years ago by flickering their land. We knew about that. We gained enough life to survive a turn, which is all I was trying to do there. They have Solitude, Cauldra, two unknowns that are presumably spells because they haven't played lands in a while. Lion Sash, okay. That's just being literally any creature. Come on, Terminus, Terminus. Okay, I can brainstorm now and try to find something to do, or I can brainstorm on their turn and try to YOLO Terminus. I think I have to brainstorm now. Two plows. Uh, well, I'm still dead to the Lion Sash. There are enough permanents that they can guess up here. Okay. They got me. One too many creatures, one too few Terminuses. Plague Engineer comes in. Force and Negation comes out. Powder Keg. I actually kind of like most of the cards in the deck. Uh, a Preordain can come out. I'm looking at Rafine's Tower, although just the general heuristic of having fewer lands in your deck versus death and taxes is one of the ways you lose. Maybe it's M one of the Aminatus. I'm going to try not to cut her every round, but she actually is the worst card in the last two matchups we've played. Okay, I have basic planes or island, or I could bowmaster and X1. Aminatu pitching to solitude. I'm not trying to be an asshole, but one of the best th things she could do in this matchup is pitch to solitude. Okay. Let's get to work here. Either Vile. Hate that for me. Okay, I'm going to basic island brainstorm here. Drawing that flooded strand means that I can play around Wasteland at least a little bit here. Second Bowmaster is kind of suspicious. I can put back a Tundra for sure. And then it's either Bowmaster or Wasteland, depending on what kind of creatures I expect to play against. Though if I want to play this Aminatu, Ever. I can't fetch basic planes. But I'm holding a tundra. Okay. I'm gonna put the wasteland on top of my deck, and then I can make an assessment at the end of their turn if wasteland looks like it's gonna be useful this game or not. Caracas, okay. Nether Sworn Canonist, weird. Okay. I mean Wasteland does hit the Caracas, but I'm still under this Aether Vile. I think I would rather Give myself a chance to have a spell, and I am going to fetch the black, just in case. Swords to Plowshares, cool. I guess I can just pass the turn then. Swords to Plowshares, doing the work here. I'm going to let them vial in this Mother of Runes. I'm going to kill their whole board. Swords to Plowshares, the Canonist. I have to do that first if I want to cast two spells, which I do. Pretty good exchange, though they still have either vial, and a single Wasteland or Port can take me off a of color for a while. Now Vile's on two, I have to be careful about shoving Brainstorm into a Spirit of the Labyrinth. Wasting me off black, okay. I would argue that black is my less important color. However, I do have two black cards in my hand right now. And they're on the mono the Vile strat, three of a kind. Another black card. I'm going to Brainstorm. I can pitch Solitude into a Spirit of the Lab, so this isn't a blowout. Wow, that's a blowout, though. Just missing entirely on everything. I will put back two of these Bowmasters, and do I even attack? I just get eaten by a Stoneforge Mystic. I'm going to pass, and uh, I'm in pain. I'm having a bad time right now. I think if I find a land there, even if it's not black, 
I'm still doing something at least. If I find a black land there, I'm actually just fine and playing the game quite happily. Oh no! <laughs> life is pain, life is shit. I guess I should just be attacking with the Bowmasters. I'm not going to concede here, even though I'm fairly certain I'm dead. I am brainstorm locked. I can't do anything. I can pitch the solitude at some point. What's this three drop? Flicker Wisp. All right, they're just stone raining me. Joke's on you, sucker. I wasn't using that anyway. Got him. Okay, I'm going to attack with my creatures into this Flicker Wisp. Happy to trade with it on either one of these bodies. Opponent appropriately recognized the same thing. I get my land back. Death and Taxes versus Control is always about can the, there's there's two things the control deck has to do. It's get your resources under you so you can cast your spells and then have spells that line up with the, the creatures they've drawn this game. And I think my spells in my hand are actually really good, but I have failed the resource acquisition phase of the game. Okay, there's the other Bowmaster. Still, I am now out of my Brainstorm lock. I'm going to fire in here because anything that would jump out of these vials, I probably just have to solitude it anyway, so whatever. They activated a vial just for funsies and didn't put a creature in. Now the vial on two for funsies. They're just fishing for stifles there. Aether Vial is a weird card that you're frequently... It is frequently correct to activate it when you don't have a creature, especially if you have multiples on different numbers. Just kind of play whack-a-mole, make them guess when you're actually going to put something in versus when you're goofing around. Like, it, they could activate Vial on three, then I brainstorm in response, then they never actually had a three drop, but they Vial in Spirit of the Labyrinth or Orcish Bowmaster and snipe my brainstorm. There's just a lot of games to be played with that card that a lot of people leave unutilized. Speaking of unutilized, my opponent just brought their vial up to four, drew their third land, and did not put Yorion in their hand. What does that mean? That means they have something. I drew my land. The game is might be played here. Okay, attacking with my orc armies. They're activating a three drop. Vial. Skyclave Apparition. Okay. Orcish Bowmaster is slurped up there. Now I have the really annoying choice to make. Uh, I guess it's not... I guess, I guess I get Scrubland here. And Orcish Bowmaster deal one to Flicker Wisp, making my Orc Army 2-2. Two, two. And then getting all the exchanges in combat. Okay, that worked out pretty darn well, all things considered. It did result in me having to fetch a non-basic without using Sam to pick up my fetch land, which was my plan. But... If I'm going to get good exchanges like that, they have one card in their hand, which we're pretty sure is a spell. They can Yori on this turn. And all that mana went unspent on their turn. And if they just like Vile and Recruiter, pick up Yori on Vile Yori on, it, it doesn't matter what just happened. Because I'm completely destroyed. Okay, draw for turn. Lorian revealed. Okay, that's interesting. I'm just going to fire this immediately for a Tundra. And I'm going to go to combat. I have Solitude that can interact with some stuff. And if they don't do anything, I will just kill this Mother of Runes while I can. As much as I'd like to wait for to see what comes out of the Aether Vials, Mother of Runes is the card that doesn't let you have those decisions. Like I was saying before, oh, they're not a Yorion deck. That's why they didn't reach for Yorion. I'm looking at my Yorion. They're just a normal deck. Okay, okay. Interesting. Interesting. All right, I'm going to put this down here so I don't forget. I was planning around this Yorion for like the whole game. <laughs> Playing against a weird, unnatural Death and Taxes deck with only 60 cards. Anyway, I was talking earlier about how the two things you have to do is get your cards to line up and have mana to play them. And historically, in Magic the Gathering, Screw beats Flood. If both players are kind of staying alive and the game ends up going long, the player who was missing land drops early is going to beat the player who was missing or who ran out of stuff to do, and we are currently experiencing a Screw Beats Flood situation. I got a bunch of good exchanges on these Orcish Bowmasters that were rotting under my Brainstorm Lock. Equipment Cat. I could play Plague Engineer and potentially lock this cat out. Okay, let's see if they Sash plus activate in response to Plague Engineer. Okay, they know what they're doing. Client Sash plus activate. Yep, okay. 
I'm not going to name cat. I'm going to name human. Let's go back to the default name on that because they clearly knew how to do that. I'm going to attack with my 2-2. Two -two. There is a good chance that the card in their hand is Cauldra or Batterskull. Those would be cards that make sense. Like tutoring a Lion Sash in this spot over one of those bangers. But I can answer those bangers with Solitude. I don't need to proactively Solitude Stoneforge Mystic just in case. They did choose Lion Sash on purpose here. There's land number four. Okay, show me the Cauldra. Shocking. What an insane turn of events that no one could have predicted. They're attacking with Lion Sash. And I'm going to trade that for Plague Engineer all day. Just Death Touch Creature on top of that thing. And I'll take the five. Because if I draw a land, I can just Solitude this th the Cauldra down and dirty. And if I don't draw a land, I can use Sam to pick up Solitude. I don't think they realize Plague Engineer has Death Touch. They just made Lion Sash one point bigger. I don't know. Maybe it was just free because the mana's around and they wanted to disrupt my graveyard. Can I get the land? No. All right. Well, I can still ponder. That doesn't slow down anything I wanted to do this turn. Yeah, ponder is free money right now. Wow, look at that. Big pile of white removal. I want all of it. Do not shuffle my library. Solitude, pitching, Eminatu. Exile the germ token. Samwise, pick up the Solitude. The Ring Bearer is legendary. I want to make sure that I make the Orcish Bowmaster Ring Bearer, because if they Caracas this, I would very much like to uh, cast it again and ping them some more. If I put it on a token, it's just a free removal spell. Okay, now I have Plow on top, Solitude in hand, Plow in my hand, and Season Dungeoneer to turn the corner. They have some big draws. Like, if they just find a Recruiter of the Guard and get their chain rolling, this could go poorly for me very quickly. A Flicker Wisp resetting Cauldra is annoying. But if they let me just draw a card and play Season Dungeoneer, I'm ready. Okay. Fetch. I'm at five. I gotta watch out for that Cauldra. One hit. KOs. Underground Sea. Season Dungeoneer. This is the gas pedal I wanted. Once again, I think Seasoned Engineer is more useful here than Court of Grace would be. Grab this Plains, it casts the Plow, I can exile two things. Cleric, Rogue, Warrior, Wizard. Peasant, Orc, Orc, Archer, Illusion. Nothing plays here. My Illusion is big enough to attack, though. Here we got in there for two. Activating Vile for five. Did we have Solitude, actually? Wow, okay. Good draw. And I have lots of coverage for this. I think I want to plow this immediately before they can draw Flicker Wisp and actually do anything with it. I, mean, I guess they didn't really have attacks, so maybe I did that more than I needed to. Rashad and Port, okay. That does not line up against the initiative. It does, it can force action on the Solitude, but my opponent's hellbent over there. I'm going into the Forge, I just want to make them dead. And I'm going to float blue. Forge onto this Orcish Bowmaster. Sam's a legend. The other Bowmaster's a legend. They knew about the Solitude. They saw it 100 turns ago. They're empty. Their haste creature's already used. Another Solitude in my hand. Now we're doing it. Here comes the squad. I suspect they'll start Caracasing to absorb damage at this point. I would bounce Sam before I bounce Bowmaster. All right, they're just taking it, though. It's good, good news for me, because I can... I have a f Lava Axe coming. Okay, one draw step to rule them all. I got way more than three damage on the board through most things, plus the trap. Our clocks are shockingly similar right now. It's refreshingly similar. I'm like 40 seconds behind them. Could have been six minutes, I don't know. I just looked for the first time. Boarding my Underground Sea, that's fine. And they scooped, cool. All right. Screw Beats Flood. Get your resources, line your cards up. Those are the lessons from that one. And same deck, let's go. They don't have Yorion. I don't need to plan around that. Or speculate why they didn't put it in their hand. This hand has Force of Will. Wasteland probably sucks. Uh, I still am going to keep this hand with four lands in it. Like I said, get your resources under you. Oh, yikes. I do have Sweepers in my deck. 
I guess I have to let this fly. <laughs> Obviously, they cast it off flagstones of all the things against my wasteland hand. Uh, they're going to be pretty stoked that their mother survives. I'm looking for Terminus and or Plague Engineer before it's too late. Let's see if they port my fetch land. I could wasteland their port. I'm just going to play wasteland and pass the turn here. As well, Mother of Runes is a powerful card. She's only as powerful as the creature she's protecting. They should port my fetch in the end step. Alright, they're porting my wasteland. I'll just waste. A death and taxes with an Aether Violent play versus without an Aether Violent play is just a shockingly different experience all around. This Umazawa's Jitte is a little scary. If the mother can pick it up and connect, then it becomes a real thing. I do have a, quite a few creatures in my deck. I'm going to Wasteland the Iganjo. If mother does pick it up and attack, though, she is tapped and not active. I don't know, but the coast is clear. Oh, if they just miss a land drop, though. Who's the Death and Taxes deck now? Cool. That was awesome. Okay. Now I can cast a Ponder and we can start doing stuff. I'm going to Tundra. I could also just not Ponder and hold up Samwise in case they get frisky with the Jitte. Yeah, I'm actually going to do that. This insulates against Wasteland, insulates against Top Deck Land. And I'm just going to fetch for Underground Sea. They clearly don't have a land at all, much less the Wasteland. And if I get Samwise in, then I can stop holding up Samwise because it's already there to block the Mother. Get back Flooded Strand. Sam's already a legend, but now he's a legend two times. And the Ring Bearer. And this looks like a great spot to slam Aminatu. I've been kind of down on casting this card, but wide open, empty board state. This is where this could be relevant. And I now know how the card actually works, which helps. Swords to Plowshares. Okay. Uh, that's, that's fine. They would need to draw a land to equip the Jitte. And if they do draw a land and equip Jitte, it means they're not doing anything else with that mana. Stoneforge Mystic. I'm not ready for this card. And in addition to not being ready for this card, Mother of Runes is there to protect it. No thanks. I forced Fitching, Pitching Ponder because I have so many lands. I have these two plus the one on top of my deck. I want to move those around turn them into spells with Brainstorm. Brainstorm off of the Black Source. Samwise. Okay, cool. That takes me to ring level two as well. Underground C, get out of here. And I guess I can actually get rid of the Marsh Flats too, because Sam's about to pick up my next land drop. Fetch. Get planes. Or no, they clearly are not disrupting my mana here. I don't... At this point, fetching a basic actually makes their wastelands better, because then they can start picking off colors. All right, big Sammy, get in there. Get back the strand. Ring level two. I'm actually going to keep Force of Ponder in my hand for Force of Will here. Oh, Terminus, what's up? Okay, Aminatu's doing her thing. For the first time. It was bound to happen eventually. Stoneforge Mystic. This one can resolve, because now I know I could just Terminus it. I grabbed the Cauldra. And Aminatu, I'm going to give you credit for this, even though the Terminus was on top of my deck anyway. Terminus. It was kind of low impact. Like, I spent Terminus and Sam to get rid of their two creatures, one of which already drew a card. But I'm not going to complain about it. I will complain a little bit about how this did not work out at all. This Aminatu Plus. I will put Prismatic Ending on top of the deck. I have to assume I'm going to remove a creature eventually. And I'm going to put Yorian in my hand. The other option is Fetch, Flash, and Sam, but I want the card on top of my deck, and now I have options of what I want to pitch to force if I feel like I need a force. But the list of things that I would force, but not just get answered cleanly by Prismatic Ending, is pretty small. That's not one of them. I could just Ultimate Aminatu take their Jitte and Spirit, but I actually don't want Spirit in play at all. I delete the Spirit. I'm going to Fetch first. Get another Underground C. Play Samwise who's at ring level 3 now. Level 3 doesn't do anything. Level 2 and 4 are the exciting ones. And then Aminatu plus. Cool. Alright, now we got action going. Aminatu can ultimate. They'd end up with Sam. I'd end up with Jitte. That's not even good. But Aminatu can survive an ultimate now and start flickering my permanence back under my control. Thalia. 
don't care. Blake Engineer, about to end Thalia's career. My opponent right now is the clock. If I can deal 20 in 6 minutes, we'll be okay. And I'm pretty sure I can. Plus Aminatu, Engineer on Human. Oh, I should have attacked first, because now I'm going to have to look at that same card again if I don't shuffle first. I'll shuffle first. Grab another Scrubland, just have two of everything. The perfect setup. You have to draw and discard, it's not optional. Kind of disappointing, because I, I want like all these cards. I think Ponder is actually the worst card in this hand. Don't tell Ponder I said that. As the Force can pitch the Yorin if I need to, the One Ring will see more cards than Ponder in very short order. Swords, my Sam... That's fine. I'm not going to fight over that. They're dying. I'm drawing cards. I just need to make sure they don't actually flip the script on me, which they've not indicated the ability to do yet. The one ring to rule them all. Draw a card. Plus Aminatu. Multiple Marsh Flats here. Shuffle away one of them. My clock just went into the red zone, but we're pushing damage. I think we'll be okay here. This one ring is going to go nutso and just find an initiative idiot. They are passing the turn without a play. No land, no spell. I'll get Tundra. I'm going to leave Rafine's Tower in my deck. I'd rather cycle it at this point. I have enough lands. I take one. I draw for turn. I tap the ring. Still can't waste land this flagstone in a way that I'm happy about. Pretty happy with Tundra. Plus Aminatu. I will put back the Wasteland. Play the Tundra. Attack with this dummy. I think I'm just going to cast Lorien Revealed here. I would like to... Just get some more things going on. I don't like the idea that I have no pressure if they get rid of my Plague Engineer. The clock is my only opponent right now. Mother of Ruins, that goes straight to the graveyard. It's dead. Sorry about that. That permanent's been in play for a while. I lose two to my ring. Bowmaster, what's up? All right, now we're clocking. Activate the ring. Play Underground C. Plus Aminatu, just moving lands around basically at random here. Back with Plague Engineer. I have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine mana. I can ponder. Ooh, Temporal Mastery, give me that. Okay, this sh Oh, no, 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 no. No, did I do it wrong? Come on. I just got so excited and stacked my ponder wrong. All right, it's fine. We're still going to win. Bowmaster, ping you. Yorion, flicker everything. It's just about getting damage over the finish line in the last couple minutes. Plague Engineer, Bowmaster, Ring. I'm not even sure if resetting the ring is correct, but I like making sure I don't die to my own junk. I can Aminatu the Temporal Mastery back to the top of the deck. Flicker Wisp. Uh, that's fine. I still have a ton of damage coming in here. Gain four life. Still naming human. Ping you. Clean up, discard this flooded strand. And you're up. And they once again pass without a play. I would take zero from the ring. I'm not going to tap it. Draw for turn. Attack with all my jerks. They are dead to my mirror. Or wait, this is not how miracles work. Shit. Oh, I can just cast this card. <laughs> the secret mode. Seven. Bang. All right, I'm just going to go to my next turn. I'm not going to activate anything. Let's just make them dead. I have Force Blue card available. Okay, cool. Got a little wonky at the end. I got so excited I stopped the Ponder wrong. But let's pretend I pondered correctly and miracled that Temporal Mastery for the win. Sweet game, though. Got them with the early double Wasteland. Gave them a taste of their own medicine. I love watching Death and Taxes concede while Mana Screwed and a bunch of cards in their hand. Ugh. Sweet vengeance. If you're looking to run a CEDH or 1v1 tournament, Eminence Gaming has your back with Command Tower. With Command Tower's intuitive tournament manager dashboard, you can handle deckless submission and player management with just a few clicks. Players just need to scan the event's QR code for access to the full tournament bracket, including seamless pairings and real-time standing updates. Take the guesswork out of tournament organizing. Try Command Tower for your next event. On the play in round four, Kate. I got stuff to do. That's all I really want. Play Marsh Flats and pass. Xander's Lounge tapped. It would be a disappointing time for me to have a wasteland with that beautiful full art showcase foil Xander's Lounge directly into the graveyard. 
This is probably a five color bean deck. We got a that's not very nice in the in the chat. Yeah, I concur. Misty Rainforest from the opponent. They said they thought we were friends. I don't even know who you are. All right, Sam can jump in in the end step, pick up my marsh flats. Let's see if that ends up being good. If this or it's not going to be salt type beans with a stifle because there's no Xander's Lounge in that deck. Let's see if Sam gets the full payday here, or if it gets interacted with. Sam has resolved and targeted. Okay. Sam is such a nutso control object when he gets to do that. Like the card reads kind of aggressive, but flash in a 2-1 in a control mirror. Surprise, also hit your land drop. That's just all you ever want to do. Opponent's doing stuff. What do we got? Florian revealed. And they searched up a Tundra. I'm ready to Bowmaster a Beanstalk all day. Savannah, Tundra. This is all Bant mana. Orcish Bowmaster in response to the Uro. Ping you with Bowmaster. And I'm actually going to plow this Uro right now before it's a problem for later. Am I going to do that, actually? Let's see. Yeah, I think so. Scrubland. I mean, they're probably pretty excited about this exchange, but... The Uro will be an issue later, and if I plow it later, they'll have gotten another card off it. And I kind of just take my two-for-one now to avoid getting three-for-one going along. And they're plowing my Bowmaster. It's already done two damage and left a 2-2 behind. Pretty good deal. Found Force of Will right on time. Okay. One, two, three. Put Yorian in hand and attack with my squad. Yeah, having the second arrow right away just completely blows out that Swords to Plowshares homework I did earlier. Fine, fine, fine. You can have that, I guess. But now I can interact with that on the stack, which I couldn't do a moment ago. And I'm actually going to brainstorm in the end step because I have Lorian revealed for the instant speed shuffle. Whoa, look at this action. Put back Terminus and, unfortunately, Aminatu. Sorry, girl. Island Cycle... Get a Tundra, I guess. And draw Solitude, cool. And attack with my creatures. I think I just slam Teferi here. Bang. Teferi. Put you on that now or never interaction schedule. Suddenly red mana. Dovin's Veto! Get out of here. That's a spicy one to have in your main deck. I guess if you're playing a lot of 4th Era Lingus Mirrors, it really breaks open what it needs to break open. It was my intention to force this Uro on the way down, but now I have Solitude. I can get back the two-for-one rather than get two-for-one. I have a land drop to make. Cast Solitude. If they force, I will force. Counterspell. Don't like getting two-for-one here, but Uro's got to go. Uh, all right. Yeah, that, uh, that Dovin's Veto really cracked me open. Uh, I also just clicked through combat when my creature was unblockable. I just play it tight here. Up the beanstalk. Now they're doing stuff. They said in the chat that my deck seems greedy and they like it. Look at this deck. I just have three colors. Uh, I'm not going to start blocking. That's not where the stress point is on this game. Okay, ponder. Can we find white removal? Yes, we can. And another bowmaster. Swords to plushares. Or some negation. Hate that. All right. Orcish Bowmaster, get in. <laughs> Force blue card where the last two cards are in. Okay. Uh, they have done a very good job having counter spells every time that I cast a spell. I'm going to have to shuffle because Orcish Bowmaster is not going to be a useful card with Uro still around. I got to find another white removal spell. And I do have to block this time. Okay, that's gone. Got a shuffle. I will grab the Rafine's Tower, and moment of truth. All right, well, they've shown me Dovin's Veto, Counterspell, Force of Will, and Force of Negation so far. Do you have another one? Okay, that, that, that's that gone. That is what we were looking for. And now I get to F6 my turns because my hand's empty. Ooh, Solitude. Gross. Still can't block, but you don't have to because my creature's dead. Alrighty. Yeah, we're super dead here. They have up the beanstalk running, and I 
the best I can hope for. My Yorion's already gone. I don't even have a draw engine left in my deck. I don't have five colors to exile the Solitude with. And they're just getting in, watching my life total dwindle, slowly but surely. I guess I could be ending the Beanstalk. And I'm not under pressure anymore. Maybe, yeah, I think this Beanstalk should have been ended. I think I'm super dead, but all right. They're putting Lauren Revealed into their end. Cool. Alrighty. They have a better draw engine than me and a more focused strategy, even though it is five colors. How do I want to play against this? Rest in Peace is meaningful versus Uro and Mystic Sanctuary. It only really affects Sam in my deck. I think one Surgical to rip the Uros out is reasonable. I don't want more than one because it's not like a good draw. It's just something I could have. Hydroblast. We saw red mana. Gotta imagine Fourth Aerolingus is in this deck. Is Hydroblast how I want to fight it? They're going to bring in Pyroblast. Most of my action spells are white and black, though. Yeah, I think I'm going to shave some swords to plowshares, leaving the endings. Or maybe Terminus is worse than all of this. Terminus out of here. Powder Keg can also answer Fourth Aerolingus if I just sit in and play on zero. Keg doesn't kill beanstalks, though. It's artifacts and creatures. It's not enchantments. Hydroblast. I'll get one of those in here. And we saw Solitude. Does that mean I want Swords to Plowshares? Back? Alright, I have one Hydroblast in here. I have no idea if this is coherent, but it's what I'm doing. Keep. Obviously, I'm a fan of my opponent's deck. Up the Beanstalk has really kind of coalesced the control game plans in the format. Or at least, really, it's the cleanest, most stable engine that you can build around. Compared to three and four mana planeswalkers that died of bolts and pyroblasts and stuff. Up the Beanstalk asks you the challenging question of do you want to play spells you were going to play anyway? I am going to keep these cards, even though the land I was looking for is not among them, but I will have drawn the other two cards by the time I cast this brainstorm. You've got a Misty Rainforest. I've got a Tundra. Pass, pass, pass. They appear to be doing something, probably a Beanstalk. Hopefully, Bone Masters will. Get paid at least a little bit here. At the very least, if they forced this, it would have been before the Beanstalk. Not that I just, like, got them here. It, like, I have power in play, but they still achieved their engine that they were looking for. I right, brainstorm. Oh no, not like this. Well, shit. I left three swords to plowshares in my 80 card deck because I recognized it's generally not going to be a very useful card. And they're all in my hand here, and I'm brainstorm luck. And without a fetch land, this Sam isn't even helpful. I just have to hope that their hand genuinely cannot interact with an Orcish Bowmaster at all. That's what I'm hoping for here, and it seems pretty unlikely. Yeah, they're hitting land drops, passing the turn. I will attack. If they just have, like, Endurance or some idiot, I lose. The ring does still tempt you on Sam, even if you choose zero permanence. Like, if they were to try to ambush my Bowmasters and block. Lay line binding. Okay. Take one, but I cannot interact with this in a way that I'm happy about. And now they're free to do what they want. I wonder if I was just supposed to shove Sam there when forcing it would have cost them another life. I'm definitely shoving Sam, though. Not, uh, not negotiable. Nothing to target. I'll make my orc army my ring bearer. I'm not even sure if it makes sense to spread it out like that. Yep, now they get to draw a card. Four freezies. No punish. I get to draw a card again next turn. And they are at seven. I don't know, I'm just angrily huffing copium here. Uh, just missing that land drop is what flipped it here. If I had been able to keep the pressure up with my Planeswalkers into Seasoned Engineer, we would have seen this work, but I don't have access to all that. I plowed Uro on the front half again. I'm just full of plows here and gated on white mana. All right, Brainstorm. Help me out here, buddy. They should counter this if they can. If they have like a Counterspell or a Dovin's Veto. They suddenly reveal they're also a Bowmaster deck. I'm very dead. Yep, just Counterspell, sure. Correct. That is a Counterspell out of their hand for my follow-up to Fairy. But if I just get Lingist here, it doesn't matter. A lot of mana in the pool right now. Fourth Air Lingus for three, drawing a card. Neat. All right, I'm going to let them declare their attackers first, because if they leave anything back, 
like I can now Swords of Plowshares the solo attacker. And Force of Will beats this, but I'm still putting up the fight I can put up here. Yep, you're the Monarch. I already couldn't win this game. Now I definitely can't win this game. I'll let you roll land, which at this point no longer helps. I'm going to play this to Fairy, who will probably get countered. Brainstorm in response, okay. Now I actually have to make decisions. My spell resolved. They have six power in play. I could attack them. Yeah, I'm going to attack, at least get a trade on one of these horses. Okay, they double block. That doesn't matter. That's the same as single blocking. I guess it plays around solitude. And now I can bounce one of the horses or bounce Leyline Binding. That's holding my Orcish Boatmaster. It's all pretty dire, but I'll bounce the Binding. This can at least put two bodies into play. And if they don't re-answer the Bowmaster, they'll start bleeding from the Monarch every turn. I know that they have the Leyline Binding that I literally just gave them. It's not like this is some great mystery of science and nature of how, how they can answer the Bowmaster. I'm going to block with one with the Orc Army. Because now if they play the Leyline Binding, I get to ping this horse and it dies. If they just pivot onto Source of Plowshares or a Fatal Push. All right, cool. You got me. I'm dead. Super dead. Way behind their engines. Honestly, missing that land drop was what did it. I have to play from ahead here. I am the aggro deck. They're the control deck. And if their engine starts firing, I just can't keep up with it. And getting Brainstorm locked in the mid game instead of curving out into Planeswalkers and Initiative Creatures after my pretty exciting start. That'll do it. On to the final round. The official Bosch and Roll Island Ponder Keep shirt is available exclusively through Coalesce Apparel. This Magic Player owned business is a staple of our community. They keep this channel on the air, and it's my pleasure to partner with them for this product. Coalesce is the best magic apparel on the market. They have awesome new designs coming out all the time. Use code Bosch and Roll to get 10% off your order only at coalesceapparel.shop. I'm on the play in the final round. Pretty sure I won every die roll this league. What a waste of good, good luck that was. But we do have a positive record on the line here, and I'm going to keep my hand non-basic island pre and keep. I hope this is a matchup where forces are good, because I have a lot of them. Ring, Aminatu. I think I'm a long way away from the ring, but I will take Aminatu, at the very least, as a blue card for all these forces. And a white card for the solitude. Aminatu does pitch to everything. At the floor of this card which I'm pretty sure the pitch elementals didn't exist last time I played Aminatu in a deck. Volcanic Island. Ponder. All right. Could be Sneak and Show. Could be the Epic Storm. Could just be Delver. They did not shuffle. Orcish Bowmasters. Wish I could cast those. I am not going to play around days here because I would rather fetch land if I can find one. I did not find one. I'm going to put back the plane, the island and the planes, and I'll just start hitting land drops. I'm not brainstorm locked. I have land drops for days here, but I cannot cast this Aminatu or Bowmaster. I am color screwed. Dragon's Rage Channeler. Okay, that resolves. I can solitude that. I do have all of the basic lands in my deck available to me, and I'm going to let them resolve this surveil, and then I'm just going to kill this. ERC. Like, this thing is not going to get any easier to deal with. I don't have black to try to bowmaster it. They are forcing exiling predict. I'm going to force of negation, exiling force of will, and hope that this Teferi can stick three turns from now on an empty board? Question mark. I don't know. It's not pretty. Solitude did get in there, and they bobble me seeing the land I left there. They do have four cards in their hand to my two. And one of my two, I know I can't play. At least for two more turns. Though it is a good one if I ever unlock it. And they did pitch a predict to their Force of Will last turn, where days might be, might have been rotting. I don't know, it's, that's tricky, because they were in the process of wastelanding me too. Maybe they were valuing days highly, given the board state. And nothing's getting better here. If they have days now, I'll have it next turn as well, and I don't know what's going on. I don't want to be under pressure if I can avoid it. Cool. That's gone. Okay, they can use Bobble to get multiple looks to flip Delver, or they can get more information about what I'm up to. They have one 
unknown card in their hand right now, plus Volcanic Island. Simply not using the bobble at all. That's really weird. What are they saving that for? Delver didn't flip. They could have had multiple looks to, to flip it. And another card in their hand. Just trying to figure out why you would save this. And now they bobbled themselves. Main phase after fetching. Oh, they have a predict in their hand. Okay. I think we figured it out. Yeah, they pitched this predict. Okay. I wasn't like making fun of their play. I was genuinely trying to deduce why they would be doing what they're doing. And they were setting up a predict to draw two cards. Understood. They milled a daze. Okay, so I'm in a great spot to draw a black source right now. They have a 1-1 one, one just sitting over there. All right, deck, fetch land, black source. Some action, something I can do. Sam the Stouthearted. Sam is a sack of crap right now. Not currently helpful. I was going to put Yorin in my hand and, and then slowly die. All right, they bobbled themselves. Now they're doing the Delver trick. They can stack their triggers to decide if they want to Delver look at the first or second card in their deck. They know what the first one is, so they get basically a double looks to flip Delver here. And I had these been stacked yet. They stacked Delver first, so they did find a spell on top when they looked with Bobble. And it's Lightning Bolt. Okay. That was my window to make something happen, and it did not happen. And now I feel like we're way behind. Wow, even predicting away the Lightning Bolt. Just the triple predict game, getting buried in cards by the Delver deck. You hate to see it. With Bowmaster in my hand, just chilling. My opponent has drawn seven extra cards this game while I'm looking at a Bowmaster I can't cast. Delver, okay. Bowmaster, you're back in. Can we do it? Can we do it? Fetch land, fetch land. Yeah. Okay. Fetch land. Get scrub land to build out my access to white. Orcish Bowmaster. Please work, please work, please work. We're in there. Build a Delver. And they've used two dazes already, and Sam's not getting better. There's currently a fetch land he can pick up and represent Yori on next turn. Cool. And I would like Orcish Bowmaster to be my ring bearer. This deck should not have Caracas in it. Maybe just the motivation to kill Orcish Bowmaster means that I should make it the army the ring bearer. Because if they have a lightning bolt, that's where it's going anyway. They have a wasteland. Channeler, who's very delirious. Five card types in there. 14 card graveyard. Pretty good. Lorian revealed. Someday. I'll probably be dead before that happens, but someday. I'm allowed to dream. Getting in with my ring bearer. Got my unblockable point of damage in there. If my opponent has nothing and does nothing with the three cards in their hand, we are actually... Are we still dead? Uh, I go to six. I fetch to five. I block... DRC next turn, I go to two, and then I block Delver on the following turn. Okay. There is technically a line if my opponent just blanks for the rest of the entire game. I can kill that for free if my plan works. That hasn't actually changed anything. Island cycle the Lorian revealed. I'm going to get Tundra. I go to my turn. Swords to Plowshares. Ooh. Does that make anything better or worse than it already is? I think I want Orc Army to attack, and just Orc Army. It's kind of got to hope that their hand is like two brainstorms here, and that's that's the whole game. Get the other Scrubland, slam Yorion. They didn't have days a turn ago. Maybe don't have one now. Yorion resolved. A pleasant surprise. They could just like unholy heat the Yorion. Flicker Sam. If I flicker Bowmaster, that unlocks Brainstorm temporarily, but if I don't flicker Bowmaster, I can't kill this Delver, and I don't know if I'm actually going to be able to win the game. Let's just see if they get a Brainstorm in under me here. I'd prefer you didn't. Nice. It'd be a lot cooler if you didn't. And they agreed. Okay. I would like my Orc Army to be my Ring Bearer now. Just put some pressure on where they have to put their removal spells, and I lose the Lightning Bolt here anyway. Oh! All right, yeah, one turn, one mana short. They wastelanded me twice this game. If I have one more land in play here to plow their creature, we're fine. But just a little short in a, a tough game against Delver, where they outdrew me by seven cards, and we actually ended up with them having fewer resources than me at the end of the game. But I have zero life, which is 
kind of what Delver's for. They don't need resources if you're dead, idiot. Hydroblast, Hydroblast, Powder Keg, Plague Engineer, Plague Engineer is the plan. Force and Negation out. One of the Aminatus. Sorry, girl. I need all my lands. I like Sam. I like Bowmaster. Seasoned Dungeoneer is pretty risky. I do have to win the game somehow, but I have to trust that my deck will come up with it. I'm going to leave Temporal Mastery in because it's funny, even though it is probably the cut. And one of the Force of Wills. Oh, Rest in Peace rules here. No, no, that's coming in over another Force of Will. Let's do it. Here I am rewarded for my leaving Temporal Mastery in my deck by having it in my opening hand. But I have Aminatu, which makes it's the nuts. I also only left two forces in, and the Temporal Mastery is a great pitch to force because I wouldn't, won't miss it that much. So as far as drawing an opening hand full of awkward, clunky one and two ofs, this could have been worse. And I can play on basics. Ooh, oh, uh oh. The dark temptations have ar arisen in me. Uh, I can I can just ending this thing and ignore days, or I could slam Bowmaster like a G, which also plays me into Wasteland. All right, I am going to not be a G. Planes, prismatic ending. I actually do need to land a lot. The basic swamp, but, so three out of the five matches we played, basic swamp would have been good in. Ponder, disappointing. If I draw the land here, though, I can slam Bowmaster over the top of days still. If I don't draw the land here, I just have to fetch Underground Sea. Hope they don't have Days or Wasteland. They did not shuffle their Ponder. Yeah! Okay, we're in there. Underground Sea. Orcish Bowmaster. Send it. I will force a force here. If they even have forces in... Oh, they would still have forces in their deck, yeah. I'm the one who's not supposed to have forces in my deck anymore. Okay, land number three. What's going on? Another Delver. They just can't be stopped. Infinite Delvers. Some Delver lists are cutting Delver, and my opponent is playing eight of them. We are not the same. Built different. They have a bobble that they're afraid to use. Ooh, let's get rowdy. Another Bowmaster. One of the best draws I could ask for here. Ping. School that just died. With no arguments. I wonder if they have Pyroblast in their hand. That would be a card that makes a lot of sense here. If they ever go for this bobble, I'll light them up, just tear them apart like a buzzsaw. Cool, they're bobbling me. That must mean that their hand doesn't do enough on its own. And Bowmaster, get to work on that bobble trigger. It's massive damage. I'm still holding force. Imanato could even come in and flicker a Bowmaster for an extra point plus an extra plus one on the army. Army's too big for Bolt now. Dragon's Rage Channeler resolves. Ponder, just straight into the Bowmasters. And they're taking their medicine, and I commend them for it. A lot of people would never pop that bobble, never cast this Ponder, and then just die. And you gotta get something going. And I'm gonna go face with the Bowmasters, because this isn't quite 3 damage, and if they don't cantrip again, I don't want these points to go to waste. They did shuffle that Ponder, by the way. Brainstorm. I'm just gonna attack with my 6-6, six -six, see what they want to do about that. It's half their life total. Unholy Heat. Interesting. I mean, this permanent was technically free because it came in and just happened naturally from my other things that also two for one on the way in. Like these Bowmasters were, the first one was a three for one, the second one grew the army. I can't, if I brainstorm into an Orcish Bowmaster, I can make it bigger. I could just force here, or I could second main play Aminatu. All right, fine. You got your unholy heat on me. And I'm already exposed to Wasteland. Might as well lean in. Grab Tundra. Black, blue, white, Aminatu. They're pretty far behind, so I don't even mind daze that much here. If they daze me down to one real card in hand, and I have Force plus One Ring plus Brainstorm going, and this card isn't actually good. Like, maybe they're like, whatever, you can have it, even if they have the daze. Wow, that was worth a Force of Will to you. Fascinating. That puts them to no cards, and they just kept their card on top. I think I just leave the force in my hand and let Brainstorm Wondering Double Bowmaster beat this Dragon's Rage Channeler. Just assume I'm going to have to pitch Temporal Mastery to force, now that I can't put it on top. I suspect Murktide, given what type of cards would be good on this board, and what card you wouldn't mill away there. Murktide it is. Force Pitching Temporal Mastery. 
If I draw a land, I get to slam the one ring. Hydroblast. That might be better than a land. Brainstorm. Wasteland I am not going to play. I'm going to put Brainstorm one ring on top. I'm going to play the Wasteland, but not use it. Hydroblast. Dragon's Rage Channeler. Opponent's top decking. I'm about to draw the one ring for turn. They did not make a play. I mean, Days would be pretty miserable here. And they did not select for this draw. It just kind of is there. I could ponder and put Yorian in hand rather than play the One Ring just into a possible daze. Okay, put Tundra in my hand. Grab Yorian. And now I can play One Ring around daze next turn. Or Yorian can flicker my Bowmasters and just go to town. Cool. Is there anything that I could do to improve this matchup? I don't think so. Going back in, classic control. I have to kill every threat they play and then beat them with whatever's left. I will keep this interactive one-for-one -one hand that can play on basics for a while. Everything I want in the matchup. Delver of Secrets. I'm going to basic island ponder on turn one. I don't mind if that gets dazed. I do mind if my prismatic ending gets dazed. And I don't mind taking three damage to make sure my spell resolves. Solitude Brainstorm the One Ring. I like Brainstorm and Solitude. I do not like the One Ring. I'll keep two of these and I get to shuffle away the other one. And Delver Blind Flip. Every time. Pyroblast. Good to know about that one. Okay, let's see if they keep the beats coming. My opponent has been very good at keeping the pressure up. And they did not have multiple one drops this game. First time that happened. Planes. Prismatic Ending. Boop. Wow, Force of Will Pitching Predict. They're being aggressive about this. Powerful stuff. I'm holding a Solitude. I'll try to figure this out later. Ponder. Yeah, the force of will to protect your one drop against control. That's old school Delver play patterns that new Delver decks haven't really been using that much in recent years, but it's still powerful if it works. Okay, I'm not going to shove my Hydro Blast into Daze. I would like to cycle Lorien Revealed for Underground Sea in the end step. Let's make sure my black is accessible if it makes sense to have it. I was hoping for a white card here to pitch to Solitude. Pitching a second Solitude hurts quite a bit. I can brainstorm now while the coast is clear. Might even find a source of plowshares or... There we go. Aminatu is what I was looking for. One ring and underground sea. Or no, I would play the underground sea. I could actually just proper shuffle here. I would like to get to five mana eventually. Okay, I'm actually going to put the other Solitude on top. And then just play Underground Sea. Solitude exiling Animatu. Exile the Delver. And then I'm going to Hydroblast the DRC. You know, they have three cards in hand. One of them is Pyroblast. Get this out of the way quick. They missed a land drop last turn, which means they're all spells. I will force a Murktide here. I am not otherwise prepared to answer it. And the top of my deck is pretty good against Pyroblast moving forward. I'm drawing Solitude, then the One Ring. I could have done this in the other order. Whoops. But the Yorion goes in my hand right now, pitches the Solitude. If they don't start refilling, we're actually doing okay. Brainstorm is selection. It's not necessarily a refill. Wasteland, that's fine. I think in that case, I want to shuffle. And I'm going to get Underground Sea. Oh, that should have been Rafine's Tower, actually. I keep forgetting that card's even in the deck. <laughs> Moto Bug. That was the card I didn't want. I wanted to draw a land and then find the One Ring later. Let's see if they can string together Wastelands now and just bury me. Okay, do I think they have Days? I have not given the, them the opportunity to cast Days yet in this game. And I'm not going to start now. If they're making no plays, no lands, no spells, there's a good chance Days is among the list of dead cards here. Let's see if they want to aggressively Pyroblast this Ponder. I think I would attack this Ponder if I had multiple Pyroblasts in my hand, but not if I only had one. Because they've seen Teferi, they've seen Eminatu, but they do only have one red mana to work off of. So, like, if you can't double spell anyway, might as well get paid where you can. And they did cast the spell. Nice. Okay. Murktide Regent, Reactive sp and Reactive Spells are the things that make sense here. I can now play around Days. They can't Pyroblast this. If they force it, that's two cards gone. Okay. I have protection. I'm going to draw a card. 
I am at 10 to start this process, which is kind of low, and a fetch land. They might be able to bleed me out with my own ring, but I hope the cards win the game before that. And Lightning Bolt is among the list of cards that it would make sense for them to have right now. I would like to start connecting with Solitude. That would be great. Honor did not shuffle, and they have a Delver. Take one from the ring. Draw. Oh, sick. Well, I was talking about Solitude. I am actually worried about my life total with the ring. The only reason I would play Solitude here is to start gaining life over Plague Engineer. This Solitude could exile one of my own creatures later. All right. Drawing cards is the same as winning, right? Oh, wow. There's a lot to like about this. And now I have a plow that can gain life. Plague Engineer. This might be worth forcing, which is why I'm leading on it. And then Bowmaster will just kill their thing anyway. Okay, human. Then I have a land drop, and I'm going to fetch for a scrub land. And I just want to put Orcish Bowmaster's face up so they can't untap and start cantripping. I do go to six in my next upkeep. I can plow myself back up to eight or solitude myself back up to eight. Pyroclasm, disappointing. Okay, well, it would have been better to hold that Bowmaster, it turns out. Now I'm at six, which is double bolt range. I'm probably going to have to cast the Solitude this turn, whether there's a target or not. Would I like to hit a land drop and go to three dead to one bolt? I don't think I can do that. All right, I'm just going to pass and hope that they like play Murktide region or something and don't have a force. Yeah, I'm in kind of a dire strait here. Predict targeting yourself. Okay. They do know this card from the Ponder. Yep, they named Mistress Bobble and then successfully milled it. Please play a Delver. Please play a Delver. Play a Mistress Bobble. Play something. Use your mana. Hey, they bobbled me. I have concerns. All right, I just have to shove the Solitude into play in the end step. Solitude. It can't exile itself. You can't just pay five to gain three life. Not a thing. If they try to, if Solitude resolves, then they try to bolt it. I will draw cards in response and try to find a force to fight over that or Hydroblast. But I'm not going to draw cards and end up in bolt range naturally on behalf of my opponent here. Okay, they are, they have this Mishra's Bobble. I could just Bowmaster this thing. And then that gives me another creature to, I would have a 2-2 two -two to Swords to Plowshares. And this is annoying enough that maybe they have to think about it. Yeah, they're heating my solitude. I think, all right, I'm going to try to, if I draw, the ring trigger's still on the stack here. If I find Hydroblast or Force of Will, I'm pretty happy with it. If I don't, I'm unhappy with it. All right, fill me up. Samwise. Ooh, Sam can just get back the solitude, but I don't know if I have enough life points to make that game work. Okay, would I? Oh, I'm literally dead to my ring next turn now, so I better plow this. Okay, I'm at nine. Bowmaster comes in. I go back down to six immediately. They're at 17, facing down three power that can't attack until next turn. Wasteland. I don't hate Wasteland, actually. I'm going to start with Ponder, though. I'd love to find Hydroblast. Oh, Teferi's good. Teferi can reset my ring next turn. I will be at three at the time where that occurs, though. Wasteland, your Volcanic Island. Fetch. Underground Sea. Sam. Get back Wasteland. Yeah, if they're just holding a bolt, they're going to win. But I have tried to attack their... I guess I could, they could bolt me to two. Then I draw a bunch of cards off the ring in response to its trigger. Even Solitude isn't enough. If I draw like a, a Solitude and a Plow, I can gain five or six life in response. Yeah, I mean, all right, there's, there's outside outs here. I have taken them off double bolt with my Wasteland, though. I think if I untap unbolted, Right now. All right. No love. I'm at two. Gonna have to figure this one out. Okay. I've used two solitudes already and one plow, which means there are five ways to gain life in my deck, and I would need two of them. And they have a second red source there if they want it. Okay. And I have to draw in response to the ring, which means that I'll take four and none of the above. Found the Hydroblast a little too late. Dead to my own ring. A turn before I could stabilize with it. Yeah, I just took too much. Uh, I start. I resolve the ring at 10. If I resolve the ring at 13, I think I win that game. It's fine. All good. This deck is 
clunky and dirtily, and I, I generally mean that in a good way. The seasoned engineer was good in a few matchups, but we had to board it out against stuff like Delver. Maybe it just doesn't belong in the deck, though it is the closest thing to an engine we have in Control Mirrors that's actually good. I think this list with the Sams and Bowmasters is a little bit confused. It's kind of playing like Esper Vile when you're really doing your thing. And then it plays like it. This is kind of like two thirds Esper Vile, one thirds Miracles with Aminatu, the Fate Shifter, who is kind of medium throughout. I suspect you'd want to either get lower or get higher in deck building. Like, really lean in. Like, Aminatu's minus one fl to flicker. Is actually pretty dope in like a uh, recruiter of the guard, Aether Vile, core Esper Vile deck. Maybe that's a thing. Or quit farting around with, with two ones that draw a card sometimes when they come into play. Play more to fairies, more terminus, more temporal mastery. It just goes super tall or super big, super grindy, and outmaneuver everyone to a point where Aminatu is really paying off miracles more often. I think we landed two thirds of the way to a good to a good coherent deck here. And deciding what the deck's actually about either way would improve your plans with it. Swaggery, I hope that feedback is helpful. Everybody thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, check out the Patreon. I'll see you next time.